This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life Then I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I say for all that you've done for me
comes the storm inside of me. So let it arise. my 
our voices in praise. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Every breath we take, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise you, God. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. You deserve our worship. Deserve our praise today. With every breath in my lungs, my heart cries out to you belongs the glory. Through every loss of victory, my soul will rise. My long, my heart cries out to you belong the glory. Every last victory, my soul will rise to only bring you glory. You glory. My 
praises to you again, Lord, knowing that you and you alone are worthy of our heart's affection, that you and you alone are the, the one firm foundation that we can put our hopes upon. So Lord, our confidence, our trust is in you afresh today. speak now we pray Jesus Amen Welcome St Margaret's it's great to see you and thank you so much for coming and welcome too to those of you who are joining us online um, Bev is now going to come and read to us uh, from um, oh and thank you to the band that's the other thing. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And Bev is now going to come and read to us, and thank you to her, too. I'm beginning to sound like a game show host, aren't I? Good afternoon. This afternoon's reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 21. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered round him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jarius came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went to be with him. A large crowd followed and pressed round him. And then jumping to verse 35. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jarius, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk round. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and then told them to give her something to eat. I think God has a slightly different agenda from the one with which I came into church, so I hope I've got this right. If not, you can all cancel your giving to the church and I'll resign and it'll all be happy ever after. I just sensed as we sang that song, uh, we trust in God, I trust in God earlier on, that that was what Jesus wanted to highlight today, to renew our sense of trust in him. Once again, I'm in a situation where I prepared what I thought was not too bad a talk, and then God decides to change the whole thing. 
and Jairus, who is at the center of the, um, uh, the reading which we've just heard, was a man who doubtless trusted in God, but as the years went by, had had to trust in God slightly less on a day-to-day -day basis. He was a successful businessman. That's why he was one of the leaders of the synagogue, those non-ordained people, but who were successful and highly respected, gave a lot of money, uh, were leaders in the community, and whom the synagogue elders wanted to be one of the leaders of the religious life of the village. He was a man whose faith was real, but whose life had left him respected by others and comfortable in himself. And then there was a crisis, unexpected, and his trust in God was suddenly had to be sharper than it had been for some time. His little daughter uh, was dying. There was nothing that he could do to change the situation. He'd obviously got the best doctors and the synagogue praying, but nothing seemed to work. His trust was really running low. And then suddenly he remembered about this unqualified, unauthorized young rabbi called Jesus, who was wandering round on the outskirts of Capernaum, where he lived, who just come across from the other side of the lake and happened to be in town that day. The synagogue locally, as in all the other synagogues in the area, had set themselves against Jesus. They weren't going to allow him anymore to speak in their synagogues. They thought he was a dangerous radical and wanted nothing to do with him. But at this point, Jairus had no one else to turn to. He was faced with the question of how do I express my trust in God. So he went to Jesus, and in front of everyone who was there, who would have known exactly who he was, he fell at Jesus' feet and pleaded with him, my daughter's dying, please do something about it. There's no one else I can turn to for help, no one else who will do anything at all. And Jesus immediately responded. Jesus immediately came with him, followed him to his house. He was delayed for a moment while he healed a sick woman, but then he carried on. Jairus must have begun to think it's going to be all right. Jesus will be able to sort this out. And then the news that he dreaded was brought to him. Your daughter's dead, his staff told him and in a dismissive way, hammered the truth home by saying, don't bother the teacher anymore. It's no use asking him to do anything. She's dead, that's the end. All our hopes have been smashed. And yet Jairus would have thought, we trust in God. We trust in God, that's been at the center of my life. It's been slightly a trust that's burned low because I haven't needed that cutting edge trust much recently. I'm successful, wealthy, respected, well known, accepted by the synagogue. But all that is of no use in this situation. Some of us in much less dramatic ways have been in similar positions where we've thought, there's nothing I can do now. I'm really forced back to a faith, to a trust in God uh, that somehow has burnt slightly low. But Jesus, totally calm, totally peaceful. Don't be afraid. He said, don't expect the worst. Don't believe that that's the end. And he said, just believe. And the word he uses is actually keep on believing. Keep on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on praying. Keep on expressing your trust. If you stop expressing your trust, Jairus, at this point, 
You'll give up all hope. Just keep going, trusting God, praying as we walk the final bit of the journey to your house. It will be all right. And his faith, Jairus' faith, was vindicated that day. We trust in God, we sang just then. And Jesus says, I want to deepen that trust today. I want for some of us to renew that trust today. I want for yet others to renew a passion in our prayer so that whatever anyone else thinks, we can say, we're not ashamed of you, Jesus. We're quite prepared to fall at your feet and plead for your help. We trust in God. And actually, sometimes we're a bit busy. Things are okay. The trust hasn't been tested for some time. And Jesus said, but I know your heart. I know your trust. I know your faith. I know you wanting to be ready for whatever comes. I want to renew your passion. I want to deepen your trust. I want to challenge you, he says, to keep on believing. And I want you to know that as you trust me, your faith will be vindicated. You are my rock in times of trouble. As you lift me up when I fall down. And all through the storm, your love. The anchor, my hope is in you alone. Faithful one, so unchanging. One, you're my rock of peace, Lord of all, and I depend on you. And I call out to you again and again. I call out to you, God, again and again. Cause you are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me
love to give us the opportunity to receive from the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is the moment I'm always tempted to kind of be a coward, but I'm going to invite people to come and be prayed with in different parts of the church. There are just enough, I think, of us to, for people to feel not too conspicuous. If you want to God to renew a passion in your prayer, I'd love you just to go over into the altar by, in the side chapel, and James and Bev will just pray for a new passion in prayer. If you would um, love for a, a deeper trust, then... Uh, just by, the, just by the drummer, which is always a good thing. Um, do go and pray there. And Sam and Bibi will just pray for a renewed trust in you. In, in God, rather. By you, uh, in God. Uh, a new confidence that you will be vindicated. And as people move... Uh, Ollie also had a word, which I think... Um, do you want to come and give it, Ollie? It's always rather... You're naturally shy, aren't you? But I think we can draw you to the front. I just love people to feel that they could move and just say, yes, I just want more from you, Lord. Yeah, I just had a sense of um, uh, the word substitute. And if you've got someone in your life that probably wouldn't come to St. Margaret's, uh, whether it's because they, they're at home and unable to make it, or it's a colleague or a friend, a family, um, that you, have sta you can stand in their place as a substitute for them here. Uh, and God sees you. Just as I kind of got that sense of God looks at Jesus and sees, uh, looks at us and sees Jesus. Uh, that sense that Jesus is our substitute. We can be standing as substitutes for fam family, friends, colleagues. And if that's you, if you've got someone on your heart, you know who that is. It could be someone who's unwell. It could be someone who you just want to see come to faith in Christ. I'd love to pray for those people. And if that's you, um, and maybe that you would, if you're not in these groups, maybe you could just stand for them and just, we can pray for, for, for them, if that's okay, Jeremy. Why don't you go on the far side of the drama uh, and, uh, and pray for those? I'd love you just to say, Lord, what would you like me to receive prayer for? Um, Luke, if you go and help Ollie as well, you'll never come back. Now I've asked you to do that. Uh, let's just move to those to where we would want prayer. And uh, if there's nothing, there's nothing. And just continue to worship. The band are good so they can lead us in prayer.
creator of the earth. Oh, how I need you, Lord. You are my only hope. You're my only Come and rescue me, come and give me life. As I lift my eyes up. my help come from As my help comes from you maker of heaven creator of the earth oh how I need you Lord you are my only hope you're my
All my life you have been so, so good, Lord. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing of your goodness as I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me and I see his wounds and his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree in tears they laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance by heavy stone Messiah still and all
Father, we praise you that, that we don't put our trust in a, a long dead God, but we put our trust and our hope in a living God. That you are here with us and you go before us, back into our, into our weeks. You live within us, that, that living hope resides within us. So Father, we turn our eyes to you again, but our hope trust. 